Election day turns to election night in Colorado. Republicans don't have their typical off-year early voting edge with a statewide tax cut on the ballot. I'll share what I'm watching in lesser known races that'll tell us where Colorado is headed. County clerks are working overtime to convince voters, one by one sometimes, that our elections aren't rigged. Colorado's current COVID surge is largely people 70 plus. Most don't have their vaccine boosters. And we hear from the community of a beloved teacher and father who chose not to get the vaccine, and now he's gone. That's next. It's dark enough now at 6 o'clock that we're just going to declare this election night in Colorado. First results in an hour. And if a Republican comeback from a generational low point starts tonight, it'll be by taking control of school boards, passing a statewide tax cut. Democrats, they're eyeing control of the Aurora City Council for the first time. If you still have a, a ballot, feel free to just turn us off and go put it in a drop box by 7 o'clock. You'd even have time to vote in person if you can't find the ballot. There are locations for both drop boxes and voting centers front and center on 9news.com right now. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger, hot burn in love for mail-in voting. That is the thing that has survived a year now of bogus election rigging claims. Yeah, first of all, no need to turn us off before voting. Watch this part, then go vote. 99% of voters as of noon have turned in a mail-in ballot, either by mail or dropping it off in a drop box. Colorado trusts mail-in ballots. If you add up all these small numbers here, not even 1% of people voted in person as of noon. That's not even quite 8,200 people people who voted in person. What you're seeing from top to bottom, unaffiliateds, which make up the top voter registration in the state, they've turned in the most ballots so far, followed by Republicans and Democrats. That blue bar to 300,000, that's they're about 10,000 votes behind Republicans. Again, this is as of noon, and barely any of them chose to vote in person. Overall, even though unaffiliateds make up 43% of all Colorado voters, just one in five, 20%, have turned in a ballot so far. Just about one in four Democrats have voted so far. And here on the right, for the Republicans, about 31% have voted again as of noon. I, I can't harp enough. Odd year elections have low turnout. But this turnout, I'll use the term abysmal. I again say local ballots in odd years. Those are the ones where you should care perhaps the most. Maybe it doesn't have the flashy candidate you're looking for, but it has the people and the issues that directly impact your finances and the services you get in your city and county. And you still have 58 minutes to hear my plea and go vote. 58 minutes left. Marshall, generally speaking, statewide, it seemed like there were a lot more reasons for conservatives to turn out this year during the off-year election. And obviously that's by design to vote for that mm -hmm. statewide tax cut to try and take control of some of these school boards. I'm not certain that those early ballot return numbers that you show indicate overwhelming conservative enthusiasm to get out this year. And, and I don't know if it's the intentional, repeated, unfounded claims that don't turn in your mail-in ballot. Don't just, not just fill it out, like the process that once you turn it in, as though that's some nefarious thing that still has never been proven. Perhaps that's part of the reason that we're not seeing this number higher. Traditionally on election day, that's when the Democratic number bumps up. Again, this is as of noon, so there's going to be seven hours worth of numbers where this part of the pie will definitely get bigger and perhaps surpass the Republican turnout. But as we have always covered in the last, I don't know, handful of years, it's the unaffiliated that traditionally tend to lean toward the Democrats. I don't know if that's going to be true this year, but it's that uh, voter turnout that will sway uh, these races that we're watching tonight. All right, 56 minutes, the guessing stops, the reporting begins on the results. Thank you, Marshall. The big lie about our elections really got rolling a year ago on Election Day 2020, and it's pretty much been downhill from there and for faith in our election security. You've got county clerks in Colorado, Republicans and Democrats alike, who have been in outreach overdrive for a year now, trying to show voters that our elections aren't rigged. They'll show you, as in one-on-one, -on -one, if you're interested. Here's Steve Staker. Well, election day is where it gets exciting. We get a lot of ballots coming through. Jeffco's Democratic clerk, George Stern, wants you to see this process. We will give tours to anyone who asks. We like showing the process off. He says his office has gotten more questions about the integrity of this election than in any previous odd year election. Our questions have changed. It used to be, how do you ensure that someone doesn't vote twice? Questions now are more about the machines. They're about how do you ensure that the machine is not 
uh, changing votes. The answer is simple. There's a lengthy audit process and a paper record that can be checked. It's bipartisan teams of election judges who are doing the work. It's their friends and neighbors. Uh, it seems like there's a new uh, rumor um, or conspiracy theory popping up every day. Um, so what we do is we try to keep track of it, and then we work to get out the truth uh, into the public square as quickly as we can. Matt Crane is the former Republican clerk of Arapahoe County and now the executive director of the Colorado County Clerks Association. Clerks are doing a lot of different things, whether it's offering more tours of their facilities or having more town halls. Crane says the misinformation about election rigging was so effective in 2020 that people are almost determined to find something wrong when they visit their election office. So right now, um, you have some people coming in and they're determined to see a ghost. Um, and so if they see a cable connected to something, they're like, oh, you're connected to the Internet when they're not connected to the Internet. Despite that, Stern says transparency is the best disinfectant. That's why he says he actually loves the constant tours he's had to offer. When people see it with their own eyes, they say, all right, OK, I feel pretty good about the Colorado system. You know, when you think about the fact that these folks have to constantly give tour after tour, you might think that county clerks would be getting sick of this, but both Stern and Crane told me that county clerks love it when you ask questions. So if you see something on the internet that just seems off and you have a question about an election rigging conspiracy theory, go to your county clerk because they say more often than not, anyone who's had those questions, who gets the opportunity to go through the election office and see it for themselves, those questions tend to disappear and they have a lot more faith in the system, Kyle. And if you don't trust your county clerk because a party, call a different county clerk of, of the same part of your party. They answer your question too. They're not going to hang up on you because you live in a different county. Steve Sager, thank you. Maybe you heard that off-year elections are boring and they don't matter. Well, we certainly did not hear that here. Tonight's results are going to give us a good idea of where Colorado is headed. So there are the two statewide ballot issues put up by conservatives. Those are kind of the obvious markers. But here's what else I'm watching. Democrats are trying to take control of Aurora City Council for the first time and could add a third Democratic Socialist to council, a far left tilt that even Denver City Council doesn't have. Republicans see school board races as a way to channel anti-mask mandate energy. They'll try to regain conservative control of school boards in Douglas County, which they last held in 2017, and Jefferson County, which Republicans last controlled in 2015. And in Denver, two approaches to the challenge of homelessness are on the ballot. Will voters approve 2B, the city's proposed tax increase for more spending, or the Republican-backed 303, which would require a get-tough approach to clear homeless camps? We get our first results within the hour. Colorado's new 8th Congressional District today got its best-known Republican candidate yet. Weld County Commissioner Lori Sane would not tell us if she's running, but Lori for Freedom is the name of her newly filed campaign committee, and the website paid for by Lori Sane for, for Congress, which they took down really quickly, vowed to fight against Democrats' socialist communist agenda. Sane declares herself a constitutional conservative. She made headlines in 2019 when she used a resolution honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to claim that lynchings during Reconstruction were because of party affiliation and not race. Sane claimed that, quote, whites and blacks alike were in equal numbers lynched for the crime of being Republican. Last year, Sane led hearings where Republican election rigging conspiracy theorists testified at the state legislature where they were unable to provide any evidence of election rigging. Colorado's public health leaders had been preparing for the CDC's panel announcement that came today that the Pfizer vaccine is good to go for kids 5 to 11. Only step left is approval of the CDC director, and she's spoken publicly in favor of it. Colorado now plans to have half of the roughly 480,000 kids in that age group vaccinated in the next 12 weeks or so. Colorado's in bad shape when it comes to the pandemic. Fifth highest COVID rate in the country. Public health experts estimate one in 51 Coloradans are currently contagious. So we're setting new COVID-2021 COVID hospitalization records about daily. Every day I tell you the same thing. Most patients we've seen all year, currently 1,254, up 18 from yesterday's record. We also know that about 20 Coloradans are dying of COVID each day. We'll tell you about one in just a bit. The surge in hospitalizations is being driven by patients 70 years old and older. Roughly two-thirds of Coloradans 70 and older don't have a booster shot. We asked the governor today what the state is saying to that group.
There was a recent meta study done out of Israel, over a million people total, that showed an additional significant reduction in hospitalization risk in excess of 90% between people that had three doses and people that had two doses. The immune protect the protection wanes quicker for people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Everybody in their 60s, 70s, and 80s who had the vaccine, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, six months or more ago, should immediately get boosted to protect themselves. Let's take a look at how tests are coming back right now. Our positivity rate averaged out over seven days is in mid 8%, 8.7%. Over the last few weeks, it's the highest that we've seen since last year before we had widespread vaccinations. A bit of Civic Center Park is going to reopen tomorrow, weeks after the city shut it down and fenced it off because of out of control drug use and property damage there. About two thirds of that historic park in the center of town is going to stay closed. Workers are still trying to restore the grass and repair some of the stone structures that have been damaged. The areas in red are what's staying closed for now. That includes Pioneer Fountain and McIntosh Park Plaza. They'll be reopened in phases later. The city closed Civic Center under a public health order in September. Denver Parks and Rec said there were issues with rodent infestation, human waste, drug paraphernalia. C says the most expensive fix at Civic Center is going to be the Greek theater. The price tag for repairs is $1.2 million because they have to repair the rare stone. They cannot get a replacement. During the closure, the park was cleaned up. The lawn areas were reseeded, fertilized, and so forth. They repaired the irrigation system. They replaced some dead and dying trees. Perhaps the most important addition, though, is going to be people. There will be 11 maintenance workers and eight additional rangers making sure that the city has staff in that park from 4 a.m. to midnight. We are getting some feedback tonight wanting a bit more love for Colorado's other pro sports team. Colorado soccer fans don't lack passion. I'll give them that. Few of you, Donna, Scott, Micah, all reached out not pleased that I failed to mention the Rapids when discussing the sorry state of sports fandom in Colorado. I had mentioned you, you got the Broncos and the Rockies who are... How shall we say? They're rebuilding, right? Meanwhile, there's a TV blackout for the championship caliber Avs and the Nuggets. Soccer fans were happy to remind me that the Rapids are in second place in the Western Conference and headed to the playoffs. And I would note, blacked out on television. A father and teacher lost to COVID. His family has a message for everyone, like him, is hesitant to get the vaccine. And the Front Range's latest water fight is over. Denver Water has the leverage in this case, and the law is not on our side. Boulder County backs down. Next. Boulder County leaders are bummed, bummed, but they can't do anything about the situation. So they agreed today to a settlement with Denver Water over the future of Gross Reservoir. Boulder County had been fighting that plan to enlarge the reservoir in southwest Boulder County. The proposed settlement to their lawsuit requires Denver Water pay millions of dollars to mitigate the impact of that project on Boulder County. Boulder County commissioners who were trying to fight this for environmental reasons said they'd rather settle than risk getting nothing at all if they lose and the reservoir expands. Unfortunately, this vote in this position isn't about stopping the dam. We don't have the ability to stop the dam. I don't, with my vote, have the ability to stop the dam. And, and now having spent almost 10 months in, in land use hearings in this role, it's become clear to me that that winning the opportunity to have Denver Water to go through a land use hearing doesn't allow us to stop it. Boulder County says that settlement money will go to residents who are directly impacted by the expansion. It'll enlarge open space and deal with some of the greenhouse gas emissions from that project. Day three, cloudy, gray, and chilly, even a little rain and snow. It all comes to an end tomorrow with a major shift in the pattern. Temperatures today in Denver and across the Front Range in the 40s. We should be closer to 60 this time of year. A little more rain and snow tonight. Winter weather and travel advisories will cancel out in the high country. Another couple of inches of snow up there already, about five to six inches has fallen. But you will encounter winter driving conditions on I-70. For Denver, mainly rain tonight, and then there'll be some areas of fog, and that fog will linger 
here through tomorrow morning. We do have that rain and snow chance until about midnight, and then things really start to calm down. After the fog burns off tomorrow, we have a beautiful day for you. Chilly night tonight, though, are low around freezing. Tomorrow, temperatures a little more like it. Sunshine in 56, and then we get you into a nice warming trend with 60s heading into the weekend and 70s for Saturday and Sunday. Chilly November days with a mix of rain and snow. Sounds like a great reason to stay inside. Of course, meteorologist poet Corey Reppenhagen headed out in search of a few choice words. Corey Reppenhagen is on the weather beat. Ski it and drink it. White gold for Colorado hitting the jackpot. That was Corey Reppenhagen on the weather beat. Her husband made a choice. If you choose not to get vaccinated, absolutely you're right, but that is a risk that, that you take. He made a choice and now he's gone. We'll check in with his family and his son's school as they cope with the loss of a father, husband, and teacher. Next. Not every family that's lost an unvaccinated loved one to COVID wants that to be a story on the news. Brian Dumas's family hopes that the story of their very much loved father, husband, substitute teacher might provide some perspective to others. I am going to miss his smile. It's going to be really hard getting used to not having him around. Brian Dumas was the father of one of our trombone players, Ethan Dumas. He was an amazing father figure. My husband was a healthy 48 year old. He contracted COVID in early October and uh, after two weeks on the ventilator, he had unfortunately passed away. But obviously in hindsight, if I could go back, I would absolutely make sure he got vaccinated. We were all stunned. The kids were stunned. The band has had hardships in the past and uh, you know we've come together and, and that's exactly what these students did. And the state championship was a week after Ethan's father died. Saturday, October 30th was the CBA marching state competition. Several students stepped forward and asked what they could do to support him. And uh, one student came forward with a great idea. Our uniforms all had on the left part of the chest a little pin that was a gold ribbon. At the end of the night, we found out that Legacy High School had won and had been able to take home their 11th state championship. We all began to cheer and someone walked up to me and said that this was for you. And someone else told me that the pins were meant to be for me and my dad. It was so nice to see how my band was able to support me through a time where I was having massive struggles. Marching band is like a family, like it's a family. We appreciate Jennifer sharing her family's story through the lens of our photojournalist, Corky Scholl. Feedback tonight from Republican viewers in the audience that will thrill the Democrats watching. That's next. Some feedback from next conservative viewers about Colorado's low voter turnout in this off year election. Cameron wrote in about our fake news show to say, of course, no one voted. It's rigged. Chris said, not much of a point to vote with Dominion voting machines. If you are a reality based Republican hearing fellow conservatives talk like that, that they are giving up on voting because of election rigging conspiracy theories, that's a post Halloween horror story. <laughs> 